Hi everyone, I'm Robert Moody. I'm the principal conductor of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. I am actually right now sitting here on my podium right in the center of the stage at the Cannon Center for the Performing Arts. I don't know if you know this, but here in Memphis we have one of the greatest concert halls anywhere in the country. I marvel at not just the visual beauty, but the acoustical qualities of the Cannon Center. It's great to know that this is the home of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra. And of course, we have two great homes. We also perform over at GPAC in Germantown, another great venue in a fantastic part of town. And in one of those two venues, you can come hear our January Masterworks concert, music of Dan Locklear, a living American composer, Rachmaninoff and Stravinsky, two phenomenal Russian composers. We are opening this concert with a work that actually I had a strong role in commissioning. In fact, I commissioned the orchestral version of the piece called Phoenix Four Orchestra by Dan Locklear. Dan is a very good friend of mine. He is a longtime professor of composition at Wake Forest University in North Carolina. He wrote Phoenix originally as an organ work and then soon after moved it from being just an organ work to a work for organ, brass, and timpani. And for a very long time, the Juilliard School of Music used that setting as their pomp and circumstance for graduation. So as their graduates walked across the stage, they played Dan Locklear's Phoenix. I learned of the piece in that form and talked to Dan and said, you know, I think this would be a brilliant full orchestral work. Dan loved the idea and I commissioned him about nine years ago to make Phoenix for orchestra. Phoenix, by the way, in his thinking is not the great city in Arizona where actually I used to live, but instead of Phoenix, Arizona, this is Phoenix as in the Phoenix rising from the ashes. It's a very stately, noble, uplifting theme and you hear this theme played in the orchestra by a brass chorale on stage and also by a brass chorale up in the balcony. This is an antiphonal approach. Antiphonal music is when sort of one group far away plays a theme and it's passed to another group on the stage. So I think you will enjoy very much this antiphonal quality. So Phoenix for orchestra is the perfect way to celebrate that. I hope you'll come and feel that celebration with us. We will keep the celebration going with a work of Rachmaninoff after the Locklear Phoenix for Orchestra, Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. Sergei Rachmaninoff wrote some of the greatest works for piano and orchestra. He himself was a virtuoso pianist, and you might have heard this, it is true, he was known for his expansive reach of his hands. Many of us can reach perhaps an octave or a little bit more than an octave. He could reach a thirteenth, some say even a fourteenth. This is getting near to two octaves that a human being could reach with one hand. The music displays that, so the way that Rachmaninoff writes for the piano has this great expansive quality and also a very singable quality. In fact, did you know that two Rachmaninoff tunes that he wrote for piano ended up becoming two very popular pop tunes in the 1970s. Have you heard of the pop artist Eric Carmen? Eric Carmen took the main beautiful theme from the Rachmaninoff Second Symphony to form his pop tune, Never Gonna Fall In Love Again. Never gonna fall in love again. You know that one? Well, from the second piano concerto, he took the tune from the slow movement of this concerto to create his other big hit, All By Myself. All by myself, don't want to be all by myself. This is actually Rachmaninoff who wrote this tune. So if you like that pop music of Eric Carmen and you didn't know that fact, then this might be the concert for you to check out, Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. The second half of the concert after intermission is nothing short of a complete barn burner on stage for the orchestra. One of the great pieces that really shows the full virtuosity of a symphony orchestra. When you think about it, when you have 70, 75, 80 players on a stage playing so many different instruments, you really have the world's greatest synthesizer. There's no limit to the kind of music an orchestra can play. This is so well displayed in Stravinsky's music from his ballet Petrushka. Igor Stravinsky, the great Russian composer, many would argue, and I would be one of them, one of the greatest composers of all time, wrote three very important ballets between 1910 and 1913. The first was The Firebird, 
after the Firebird came Petrushka, and after Petrushka, the Rite of Spring. So we're playing the second of those three ballets for you. The story of Petrushka, well, Petrushka is to Russian lore as Till Eulenspiegel is to Germanic lore, as Pinocchio is to Italian lore, as perhaps Dennis the Menace is to American lore. He is a boy, perhaps a young man, who cannot seem to stop himself from getting into mischief. And in this case, he's not a young man, he's a puppet. And the Petrushka puppet is a puppet that comes to life, and he is very much in love with another puppet, the ballerina, the beautiful ballerina. And then there is sort of the Moor, who is another puppet, who is the scary character, who's also in love with the ballerina, and eventually he kills Petrushka. Petrushka, the music, displays this idea of being at a Shrovetide fair and during all that happens sort of at a community gathering, a wonderful street fair, a farmer's market, this kind of feeling is happening and you hear various parts of a fair or a circus or a carnival displayed in the music over and again. It ends with some of the most powerful music I think ever written. Make sure you don't miss this concert. Stravinsky Petrushka, Rachmaninoff's Second Piano Concerto, a work that will be new to you probably, Dan Locklear's Phoenix for Orchestra, as we enjoy how we are arising and moving forward in this 21st century. See you there.